There is no repentance needed for salvation. That's what I'm talking about. There's so many people out there. They look, let me just, you know, the apostles, the brothers who ran with Jesus throughout Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they they were they were operated under sense knowledge. You know, what they saw, what they tasted, what they smelled, what they felt, what they heard. That's sense knowledge, their intellect. They didn't have understanding about Christ being the substitute and things of that sort. They didn't understand that they were the righteousness of God in Christ. And you read Acts chapter 2. The last time you hear the word repent was when Peter said in Acts chapter 2, verse 38. And I know I got a lot of apostolic brothers out there that really, they live by that verse right there. But you don't have to be, you don't have to repent to be saved. Peter didn't even understand it. Because you read in Acts chapter 10, Peter was preaching the Holy Ghost fell around verse 44 and 45. The Holy Ghost fell on them folk. The, the Gentile stars were speaking in tongues. They had received the Holy Ghost. They were saved. And all they did was just receive. And then Acts chapter 15, mark me now. Go to Acts chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. There was a great dissension. Folks was arguing over whether you should or should not be circumcised to be saved. You don't have to do anything to be saved. My point here is you don't even have to repent to be saved. And then Peter speaks it forth in Acts chapter 15, verse 10 and 11. Then you go to chapter 16, Paul and Silas is in jail. And that uh, jail guard, he asked them, what, what must I do to be saved? Paul simply said, call on the name of the Lord. And that's all you do. Romans 10, 13, call on the name of the Lord. Romans 10, 9, you confess Jesus Christ as Lord. Believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. All you have to do to be saved is call on the name of the Lord. You don't have to repent. What's my point here? See, if you have to repent to be saved, then, then, then that's works. Because we're already the righteousness of God in Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. He who knew no sin became sin that we might be the righteousness of God in Christ. So if you're already righteous, why, what are you repenting from? And Colossians 1, uh, 1, 13, 7, 1, 13 says, He has delivered us from the powers of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. So since you're already delivered from the powers of darkness, what are you repenting from? You may, you're going to say, well, Lord, I repented, therefore I got to be saved. And God is looking and saying, well, what did my son come for? Why did Jesus come if you got to repent to be saved? You see, that's works and that's your performance. You don't have to repent to be saved. So when Peter said, repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus, Peter didn't, didn't even understand. He didn't understand. All you got to do to be saved is receive salvation. Jesus saves. Jesus is the one that saves. You are the righteousness of God in Christ. Hallelujah. Man, that's the point right here. There is no repentance. If some people got people saying you got to stop this and stop that and stop this and start that and start this and stop that. You don't have to do anything. Jesus saves. Now, after you get saved, Paul instructs us to put on the, put on the new man. We need to uh, set our mind on the things that are true, just praiseworthy and of good report. Meditate on these things. Set our mind on the things above. So he tells us how to think. He tells us a way to conduct ourselves. But you don't have to repent in order to be saved. So people need to stop saying that. Stop using Acts 2.38 to tell everybody repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus. All you got to do is just receive Christ Jesus to be saved. Receive Jesus into your life and you are saved. Call on the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. That's all. You read, oh, hallelujah. You read, even read Joel. Peter, Peter had just read it himself in Acts chapter 2. He had just read Joel. He quoted Joel. Joel even said, whoever calls on the name of the Lord, just read what Peter was quoting in the book of Joel. But Peter still missed it. And he still tells people, repent and be baptized. That's all they knew. But then around Acts chapter 15, and then read 2 Peter chapter 5 also, Peter understood what Paul was saying. You don't have to repent in order to be saved. There's no need for repentance for salvation. Hallelujah. Check it out. Just check it out. Yeah, just study and show yourself approved. You don't have to do anything to be saved. Nothing. Jesus said, once you put your hand to the plow and look back, you're not fit for the kingdom. Well, guess what? None of us are fit. Some of us not only looked back, but went back. What is Jesus saying? <laughs> you're not fit without him. The scripture says in Matthew chapter 5, the Beatitudes, blessed are the pure in heart, they shall see God. Well, guess what? None of us are going to see God because nobody's got a pure heart. What is Jesus saying? Without him, you will never have a pure heart. It's all about Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. It's all about Jesus. Without Jesus, you don't have a pure heart. Without Jesus, you'll never be fit. Without Jesus, you'll never be righteous. Without Jesus, you'll never be saved. There's nothing you have to do but receive Christ Jesus. Receive his salvation. Amen. Now click subscribe right here to this BFABP.com. That's for believers, believers from a biblical perspective. Check me out on Facebook, BFABP as well. Like me there. Hallelujah. I put my Sunday sermons on my Facebook site 
Anyway, I love you. God bless you. I pray for you on a daily basis. Have the best day of your life. In Jesus' name.